Hey Bulls fans, what's up? JR here today with the second edition Pathfinder Bestiary. That's right, we have the second edition Creature Compendium for Pathfinder. It has over 400 different monsters in it, uh, which is a lot. They are crammed into just under 400 pages. This is 357, counting all the indices and everything. Uh, <clears throat> this book is exactly what you think it is. It is the, uh, the bestiary. It's just a list of monsters from A to Z. Uh, it gives you a, a lot of what the new creature uh, rules are like. Uh, it, it gives you a guide to the new uh, monster entry, which starts with a creature name. And like everything in Pathfinder 2nd Edition, it has a number of keywords uh, that help you identify what it is uh, that, that kind of talk about the different rules that it's got. Uh, it's got any different that'll list its perception, its languages, its skills, its ability modifiers, and only the modifiers, not the scores, because that's not really important. Uh, it'll list any equipment or magic items or special thing that they're equipped with. Uh, it'll have their interaction abilities, and then you'll also find their AC and saving throws. You'll find their hit points and any immunities or weaknesses or resistances they have. You'll find their automatic abilities. These are things like auras, uh, <clears throat> and then you'll find their reactive abilities, which they can use as free actions or reactions triggered by something else that's not the creature's turn. And then finally, you'll find their speed, any melee attacks or abilities that they have. Uh, these can be everything from like a basic attack or a bite to a devastating melee effect, uh, ranged effects as well, and then any spells that they have. They will list here as well, as well as what their DCs are, their attack modifiers, their attack spells, and <clears throat> uh, they'll go from leveled spells to cantrips. Then you've got any innate spells that they have, uh, any focus spells that they have, <laughs> any ritual spells that they can cast, and any other offensive or proactive abilities that they can do on uh, their turn. These are things that, that automatically affect a creature's offense, as well as uh, uh, free actions or other reactions that they might have. So that is a uh, chonky entry to get through, but so is everything in Pathfinder. And you've got a ton, a ton of new monsters. They've got, uh, I love that they kind of start off with the more cosmic stuff. Like right out the gate, you have the Aeons, and then you get into more like traditional things. You've got the uh, Azata, you've got the uh, Lilens, you've got the, like, you've got Celestials straight, straight from the get-go. You've got Banshees, you've got Baumals, you've got Bears. Uh, they just have everything here. Now, it is an alphabetical listing. Uh, they also include uh, indexes of like monsters by level, uh, as well as monsters by, you can find type. Uh, the different keywords they have just make me think there's going to be some kind of online uh, companion to this to help you really sort through everything. That's sort of uh, that just screams, okay, we're ready. We've got these things pre-tagged and pre-defined and ready to go. So when we have an app coming out, we're ready to launch. Uh, there's just a ton of stuff, and the artwork here is amazing. Uh, you've got the, the crazy uh, Luco and Astrid Damons. These are the D-A-E-M-O-Ns, uh, which include the Cacodemon, uh, looking, looking like he's got an upgrade since his early Dune days. Uh, <clears throat> as well as a few other familiar uh, faces. You've got Deep Gnomes, you've got the uh, Pathfinder interpretation of the, the Demons and Devils, uh, which are out of the Monster Manual from D&D. You've got your Succubus, your, your Galabrezu, your Vrox, your Meriliths, your uh, uh, Baylors and Pit Fiends as well, uh, your Limiers and all that stuff, because all of that stuff is still there. It's it's great. You've got your Chromatic and Metallic Dragons. Uh, you have got all of the different rules. Let's take a look at one of the monsters in here. I'm going to keep flipping, and then we're going to find something that looks cool and take a look at that. Let's take a look at the Adamantine Golem. This is a Creature 18. Uh, it has a uh, 26 perception bonus. It's got dark vision. It's got a plus 38 to athletics. So that kind of gives you right away uh, a, a good idea of the kind of scale you're getting at here, right? This this game doesn't mess around. Uh, you're going to be rolling big numbers. You're going to be uh, doing lots of damage, and you're going to need to. Uh, you're going to need large bonuses because this has an AC of 42, uh, fortitude save of 33, reflex save of 27, and a will save of 29. Uh, 
It's got, <clears throat> you've got a strength bonus of plus nine, a con bonus of plus nine, intelligence and charisma modifiers of minus five. Again, you only see the ability modifiers, not the, not the stuff. It's also got uh, 255 hit points along with repair mode, which is explained uh, in the entry. Um, we'll kind of talk about that in just a second. Uh, it has immunities to bleed, death effects, disease, doom, drain, fatigued, fire, healing, magic, mental, necromancy, non-lethal attacks, paralyzed, poison, sicken, and unconscious. Uh, it's resistant to uh, it's resistant 20 to physical damage, except for vorpal or adamant or vorpal adamantine weapons. Uh, it has golem anti magic. It is harmed by acid. Uh, it takes 9d10 or 2d10 from areas of persistent damage. It is healed by fire in the area. It takes 2d10 if it's and slowed by electricity. Uh, repair mode. When the adamantine golem is at zero hit points, it isn't destroyed. Instead, it enters repair mode, during which it is slowed one and can't take reactions. Uh, it can take only the self-repair action, outlined right here. Uh, once it has more than 30 hit points, it can use any type of action and can use reactions, though it remains slowed and can't take any other things uh, until the start of its next turn. If a critical hit with an adamantine vorpal weapon reduces it to zero hit points, or if it hits it while it's already at zero hit points, then it's destroyed. These things are tough. They're meant to be tough. Uh, it is, however, vulnerable to dispelling. The golem can be targeted by disjunction and dispel magic. Uh, if such a spell, it, uh, ninth level or higher, targets it, the golem has its resistance lowered to 15 and is slowed one or slowed two if in repair mode. Uh, for a d4 rounds. During this time, if anything reduces it to zero hit points, it is destroyed. So you've got a way if you don't have an anime, you will be looking to kill it. Uh, we also see it's got a speed of 30. We see one of the new attack entries. Uh, it uses its fist. Uh, it is a plus 35 attack bonus. It tells you what its damage is. However, it also includes some of the new weapon traits, um, which are you will need to learn and understand what they are. Uh, this is deadly 3d12. Uh, <clears throat> it is magical. It has a 15-foot reach. Uh, it does 3d10 plus 17 damage, which is bludgeoning, plus it also does destructive strike, which is on a critical hit. It breaks the target's armor, if any, in addition to dealing damage. If the target has a shield raise, it breaks the shield instead. Then it's got its inexorable march, which lets it kind of uh, ramrod forward. Creatures can try to get out of the way by attempting a DC 45 fortitude save. Uh, <clears throat> and it's got different uh, different abilities that happen based on whether you get a critical success, a success, or you fail. Uh, it talks about its self-repair mode. Again, it gains 30 hit points whenever it does that. Uh, and then it's got its vent, which lets it deal fire damage as it exudes flames. Uh, as you can see, it's kind of, it's, it's basically like Pathfinder was. It just has more to it. There's, uh, the numbers are bigger. The actions are more discreet and compartmentalized. Everything has its own specific effects. This is honestly uh, <laughs> one of the more streamlined Pathfinder entries I've ever seen. Um, and you've got like just a ton of the creativity and imagination of the, the folks that put this in on display. You have uh, Pathfinder has everything from the typical D&D &D fantasy things like werewolves and gnolls and uh, uh, will-o'-wisps and whites and all that stuff to a, a bunch of their own, like, creations, like the Zulgath, um, or the Zaraman, and, uh, their various flavored demons and gods and devils and all of that stuff. You've got big foes, you've got little foes, you've got in-between foes, uh, and then you've got, uh, things that explain all of, this is a glossary that explains all of the different, uh, types and keywords that you can find in there. Uh, you've also got different, uh, rituals that, that these, <clears throat> that let you contact and appeal to extraplanar forces like angels, devils, or demons. Uh, and then it's got a guide to creating your own uh, creature by, uh, or finding your own creature by type. So you can look here and find all the aberrations, all the animals, all the ethereals, all the plants, and so on and so forth. This is a list of them by levels, and that is everything. Uh, it is a catalog of over 400 monsters. It doesn't waste any time getting right to it. Uh, if you're looking to play Pathfinder 2nd Edition, this is one book you'll definitely want on your side. Anyway, I've been JR. This has been uh, The Bell of Lost Souls. Thanks for watching. Click to subscribe. Check out more videos. And thanks for watching.